warm welcome to Your Korea. Ahead on the program, we'll find out the story behind Jobs Queen Serena Russo's success and we'll get tips for applying for your next job. But first, if you've ever felt like your boss might be spying on you, you're not paranoid because they probably are. Surveillance is increasing in all facets of life, not least of all in the workplace. Whether they're checking your emails, which websites you visit or what phone numbers you're dialing, Big Brother is watching a lot of the time. So what are your rights as an employee and what do employees need to know to make sure they're not breaking privacy laws. Well, joining us to share their expert knowledge today are employment lawyer Catherine Dent, Director of People and Culture Strategies, and from Monash University we'll also have Professor Peter Holland joining us as well. But Catherine, I might start it off with you. Sure. So what is behind the increase in employee monitoring? I mean, do companies trust their employees less? Why are we seeing more of it? I think it's a pure fact that many more devices are being issued by employers, so you've got an increasing use of technology and an increasing use of those devices. I don't think that there's a trust issue, I don't think there's a decreasing amount of trust, but we certainly are seeing almost commonplace that employers will be implementing workplace surveillance policies and asking us for advice on how to implement them. Is it becoming easier to s survey as well what, what people are doing at work? Well, in New South Wales and in the ACT, which are the two strictest jurisdictions mm. in Australia, there are quite heavy laws around it, mm. but it seems to me that most employees would accept that they no longer have any reasonable expectations of privacy around their computer usage, mm. the computer surveillance, and camera and tracking devices that can be used. So should employees be concerned about this on, on a sort of everyday basis? Certainly employees should be alert that their employees that their employers can be um, using different types of surveillance in the workplace but they should also be comforted by the fact that again there are laws all around Australia that require employers mm. to take certain actions before they can engage in that surveillance. Employers have to notify in relation to the kind of surveillance whether it's tracking computer yep. or um, camera surveillance. Um, they've also got to notify employees within a certain period of time and they've got to undertake, for example, computer surveillance in accordance with policies that have to be promulgated to their employees. So employees do have notice of the surveillance and so their expectations can be curbed in that regard. Well, let's bring in now uh, the university professor, Peter Holland uh, from Monash. Peter, great to have your company on the show. Just bringing you in Hi, now. How are you? In terms of this uh, increased surveillance, should employees be concerned about this? We were obviously just talking to Catherine Dent about it, but what do you think? Well, they should, but also as well, the research we've done shows that uh, people don't really understand the extent of uh, monitoring and surveillance that are under and the fact that this, this is stored and uh, we keep focusing on the fact that um, they need education and understanding of what they can and can't say and what type of information is stored with regards to what they say and do at work. So, yeah, very much so that people need more education because of the ubiquitous nature of monitoring and surveillance in the workplace. All right, so Catherine, let's get your view. In terms of what's legal and illegal, because that's sure. what we want to know, in terms of employing employers monitoring your emails, work emails, obviously it's legal for them to, to look at them. It's legal for employers to monitor under computer surveillance mm. anything that's done at a place of work. So in New South Wales and in the ACT, for example, mm -hmm. there is legislation around computer surveillance at work. Yeah. In other jurisdictions, it's even less regulated. Mm -hmm. So work-related emails or personal emails, if they are being engaged in at work, is the subject of that surveillance. So, Peter, if people are you know, on Facebook on their work computer for you know, five minutes a day in their lunch break, is that, is that surveyable? I mean, are people allowed to... Are your workplace allowed to look at that? Well, yeah, if you're, if you're using your work computer and your work email, then work has the rights to have a look at that. The other issue that you've got to look at here, and I think this was brought up in, in the previous comments, was mm. that if you're on your work uh, station at home, uh, the, the blur between what's work and what's not is very interesting, and a lot of people will be on their work emails at home doing their work, but might be thinking in a more relaxed sense they can say and do other things. So it's really uh, an interesting issue about what constitutes when you're at work and when you're not at work. But if you're on your work computer, mm. then employers have every right to examine your emails. So how, what do employers need to do, Peter, to make sure they're not breaking privacy laws as well? Well, again, I'd probably defer to the, the lawyer on that, but uh, from, from a management perspective, what yeah. we emphasise is the fact that you should educate people, but also be inclusive. I think you need to educate your workforce about what they can and can't say, 
and what type of issues might constitute them um, getting themselves into trouble at work, uh, making comments, uh, social media, things like this. People are just making comments and not realizing that it's stored, recorded, and can be seen as, as uh, defamatory or used against them in, any, in, 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 a, in an organizational context. So uh, very much about policy development and inclusiveness. Don't, like most people, I'm sure we've all done it, that you click when you get on work, you click to say you agree to all the mm. terms and conditions with regards to employ, uh, employability at the, at the work site. Well, you know, I think you need to include people and let them understand what that actually means. Yeah, so Catherine, in terms from a legal perspective, do they need to set out what they'll be monitoring in, as, in terms of an employer to an employee? Yes, if we look at the strictest jurisdictions being New South Wales and the ACT, for computer surveillance, the employer has to say what kind of surveillance. So if it's computer surveillance, they need to say um, whether it's for an ongoing period or it's going to be only for a specific period. If it's continuous or intermittent, they also need to be able to say um, to the employee that this is the policy, this is what you're going to be monitored in accordance with. And they need to be able to provide evidence that the employee, of course, understands and has received that policy. In addition to that, it has to be notified 14 days in advance of that surveillance being undertaken. You know, you hear stories about people getting fired for, you know, looking at websites they shouldn't be, not, not necessarily, you know, illegal websites, but just websites that probably, you know, are distracting for, for the workplace. Catherine, can you get fired or sacked for, for you know, being on Googling things during your workday? Well, it really depends on what policies the employer has in right. place. And we find very commonly at People and Culture Strategies that our clients have both a computer and an IT policy which sets out the type of computer use that's permissible but also the workplace surveillance policy which goes hand in hand with that. So clearly if an employee is engaging in Google searching or Facebook or other types of computer Gossip activities, or, yep. correct, even if it's not unlawful, if it's in breach of the policy then an employer can discipline an employee But that has to be set out in their policy before they it can... It should be set out unless you know there are obligations in contracts of employment about not bringing an employer into disrepute right. so if it's going to damage the employer the ball game with Twitter and Facebook and oh exactly we've seen a bit of it lately plenty of cases um, Peter I might ask you as well in terms of staff morale what does it do to, to the employee employer trust and relationship when you know an employer is potentially monitoring all your activity yeah, look, that's a good point. We've done a, a national survey on this and we found in our recent report that the in the, 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 as you increase the levels of monitoring and surveillance, uh, employees' trust or perceptions of trust in management goes down. So there is a fine line here uh, between trust and accepting that your workforce you know, is there to do a good job. If they understand what the policy perimeters are, that should be enough. But it, do it does indicate that um, if people feel overly surveilled, mm -hmm. they'll feel that there's a breakdown in trust. And this is a real really important issue in terms of management today. Most of us are in white collar jobs where engagement and commitment is important and underpinning that is trust and if you don't have that it can damage the employment relationship. So it is a fine line that employers have to negotiate because uh, a good example would be in how rapid technology has occurred mm. is that someone was talking yesterday about the 7-7 bombings and saying that the reason people were confused about what was going on is there was no social media 10 years ago so mm. it really is a quite a rapid and involving area. Yeah, social media, as we were saying, a whole other ball game in terms of, of, you know, riding on them. But what about phone calls as well, Catherine? And what's the sort of legal ramifications there? Can they monitor your phone calls? Is this, can this be set out in the, in the policy at the beginning of your employment? Well, again, in relation to phone calls, there is a specific law around listening devices right. in almost every state of Australia. So you can't listen to, record or monitor private conversations. So it generally has to be with consent. But obviously there's a broader issue at play here. And if you're on a private phone call at work, that's easily detectable yeah. by an employer that may not need to even monitor it. Um, so uh, again, it comes down to consent and it's only in very, very rare cases that a private phone call could be overheard, monitored or recorded. So there's probably more stringency around a phone call than there would be around computer surveillance. Right. Peter, I just want to get your view as well. If an employee thinks they're being monitored and they're uncomfortable about it, what should they do? Because particularly if it's legally allowed. 
Yeah, well, I guess there's a variety of factors. I think it's a discussion with management about why it's being, why, why they've got that level of monitoring and surveillance. It, is, is there an actual requirement for it? If the employees and employer can sit down and discuss why and, the underst and, and understand the reasons for it, they can certainly talk to employee representatives about this. Um, but again, it goes back to the heart of the issue about, I, I would argue, that employers and employees need to sit down and negotiate what what are reasonable policies and, and, and employees understand it. Often the breaches are related to the fact that people are not aware of what they're saying or doing actually mm. breaches policy. So again, it's a difficult one, but again, it goes back to the communication and trust that you've got to build between employees and employers. But again, unions, employer associations or management themselves to just talk about what the issues are and how it's making people uncomfortable. Mm. And Catherine, how would an employee sort of state that they're uncomfortable about being monitored? Would they ever sort of win a case against an employer in this sort of arena? Well, again, if the employer has done it in accordance with the laws yeah. in that state or territory, then really there's little recourse that an employee has. It's really where an employer breaches their own policy or if they don't have one in place or they're not complying with the laws that gives the employee the right to challenge. So in terms of objection by an employee, it's really limited to those very few circumstances. All right. Lots to talk about always. Catherine Dent, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. And Associate Professor Peter Holland, thank you for joining us as well in Melbourne. Of course, a very interesting interesting topic, particularly given what we've been seeing on uh, social media recently. Now we need to go to a quick break. When we return, we'll be back with the story of one